I've got an idea that's sort of related to this. My, my one little weird sciencey thing in honour of, of Matthew Patrick's retirement that I'm going to try and write. Which now I'm saying this here, if I leave this actually in the edited video at the end, I'm kind of holding myself to actually going and making that video. Six months later. Does a half clap actually make any noise? Yep, that was my grand idea that I was talking about. So this there you go. is a clap and a half. Obviously we can all hear the clap, but what about the half? Well, if you want to figure out if something makes a sound, we need to understand what sound is. So let's just Google it. Okay, so Britannica says, a mechanical disturbance from a state of equilibrium that propagates through an elastic material medium. Or in understandable English, it's a vibration of particles in a substance that moves a specific type of wave called an acoustic wave. So welcome to my desk for my little live action demonstration of wave using only the best technology available, a slinky. So waves are basically just a transmission of energy in a direction. There's two main types of waves, and when most people think of waves, they're thinking of transverse waves that look like this, where the energy transfer is 90 degrees to the oscillation. So in this case, it's oscillating up and down, but the energy is moving from one side to the other. The other main type of wave is called longitudinal, where the wave oscillates in the same direction that the energy travels, so like this. And that's why I got a slinky rather than using a piece of string, because it's harder to demonstrate a longitudinal wave with a piece of string. In fluids, acoustic waves are longitudinal, so like this. So anytime you hear something in the air or underwater, it's a longitudinal wave. If it's in a solid, it can be either longitudinal or transverse. Obviously, not all sounds sound the same. Two differences in sounds are their pitch and volume. The pitch is related to the frequency of the sound wave, the number of vibrations that pass a point each second. The more vibrations, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. The volume is determined by the size of the vibrations. The bigger the vibrations, the louder the sound. So that's a bit about what a sound actually is. But how do claps make a sound? Well, that depends on your technique. Take the most basic clap, two flat hands smashing into each other. The air between the hands is forced together and then out with increasing speed as the hands approach each other. This creates an abrupt pressure change, creating the shock wave that is the sound. Now if you cup your hands when clapping, the air is squeezed in a little less, meaning that the pressure change is smaller, producing a quieter sound from that effect. However, the small hole made by the shape of the hand can create what is called Helmholtz resonance, where the air around the hole vibrates, creating a low frequency vibration. It's the same sort of effect that makes a sound when you blow air across the top of a bowl. The main takeaway here though is that actually clapping makes a sound by having your hands make physical contact with each other. So a half clap would have to work in a different way. Right, let's just quickly re-establish that a half clap is two hands moving together as if they were about to clap, but suddenly stopping their motion before contact is made. But how could that make a sound? We've established that a sound is just a wave of moving particles through the air. If you waft your hands through the air, it will move the air particles around them. So anything moving in air creates a sound? Well, it's not quite that simple. Remember, sound is a wave of moving particles, not just the movement itself. To create a wave of moving particles, your hand has to be moving fast enough. Take this slinky again. If I slowly move this end up and down, you can see that the movement isn't transferred along the slinky to create a wave. It's not until I move it quicker that the energy starts to propagate along it. So if you move your hands quick enough, you'll create a small wave of moving particles through the air, also creating a pressure change in the air between the hands that can propagate outwards, though a much smaller pressure change than actually clapping. Well then, half claps can make a sound, problem solved. But then so does every tiny little bug that flaps its wings that you can only sometimes hear, and we don't really care about those. So what we really want to know is, does a half clap make a sound that a person can hear? But how do you hear things? Well, with your ears. But seriously, how does hearing work? The bit of your ear you can see is called the auricle. It collects and channels sound waves into your ear hole or canal. The waves travel along the canal until they reach the eardrum, aka the tympanic membrane. The oscillating waves cause the eardrum to vibrate, and that vibration is transferred to tiny bones called ossicles, which begin to move. The ossicles transfer the waves into part of the inner ear called the cochlea, an organ filled with fluid. The fluid moves in response to the vibrations from a window connected to one of the ossicles. The movement of the fluid causes responses in 25,000 different nerve endings, which convert the vibration into electrical signals. These signals are then sent along the auditory nerve to the brain. So to be able to hear something, you need a strong enough vibration to cause oscillations of the eardrum, and the size of these oscillations are related to how loud the sound is. The volume of a sound is measured in decibels, a unit based on the power of the sound wave. 
A sound wave with a power of 10 to the minus 12 watts is defined as zero decibels, with the scale increasing logarithmically from there, i.e. an increase of plus 10 decibels is actually a sound 10 times louder. For the mathematically inclined among you, I I've put the full calculation up on screen. For a sense of scale, a quiet conversation is around 30 decibels, a car on a motorway is around 100 decibels, and a machine gun is about 130 decibels which is approximately the limit of human hearing before it becomes painful. But that's the upper limit. We care about the lower limit. This is where that definition of zero decibels comes in. It was set at that because that's roughly the quietest perceptible sound. Bear in mind though, all these limits are different depending on the person. All people can hear different amounts of sound. So these are all rough scales. Let's also consider that humans can only hear sounds the frequency between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Let's see if we can hear a half clap. So we're back on the desk for me to do an actual real life practical test for once. I've got three different things here to measure the sound. First up is an online sound level meter connected to my microphone, which you can see uh, just here is having to be positioned in a really, really weird way. And I've had to play with the settings to try and get the sound level reading to match roughly to what the others were. So chances are this might sound a little weird on the audio, but I needed to sort of play around with it to get it to match just for this test. And yeah, I'm pointing it like upside down and down towards the other two. So I'm trying to get the three actual like bits measuring the sound as close as possible to each other. Then in the middle is my phone. There's a sound level app that I've got, which is using my phone microphone. And it's really bugging me because I've had to make it be upside down so I can put the phone microphone in the right place. And then finally, we've got this little sound level meter that I got off of Amazon. So one of the first things you'll notice is when I'm not talking, there's still a reading. There's still sounds going on. Like we're getting 30 odd decibels. A large chunk of that is probably coming from my PC, which is like just off to the side here, away from the camera. And yet I can't really turn that off because I kind of need that to be doing the recording right now. What that means is when we're looking for an increase in sound, we're looking above that sort of baseline. You can see when I stop talking, uh, about 36 decibels-ish. This is a bit where I've got to try and awkwardly get my hands in frame as well here to see where I'm actually doing the half clap. And I've also got to kind of shut up and try it. But let's just shut up and try it. The other fun part is I've got to try and make sure that nothing else is moving as I do it. Like if I've sat on my chair and if it's like a little chair creak happens at the same time. But you can sort of see that each time that I was doing it there, there was an increase of a few decibels. Let's just for a test as well, see what happens when I actually clap. You can sort of see in there, there's almost an instantaneous spike up to roughly 80 decibels. But the half claps... You know, they do seem to roughly, uh, I think, we're getting a few decibels there. So I, I think that's the, the sound level beat is at least telling us that they think that you should be able to hear a half clap. But there is one other probably better test that I could have done right from the beginning. And that's to just use my ears as the sound meters instead. You know, how else can you actually determine if you can hear something without trying to hear it? Now, disclaimer, this is only my ears and whether I can hear it. And I don't think my hearing is that great. It's not horrendous, don't get me wrong. I can hear people, even if I don't really want to half the time. But for now, I'm just going to start wafting my hands near my ears, looking like a complete idiot, but doing it for science and therefore not that much of an idiot. So that was a solid, I think I heard the first one, or at least felt the first one. It's that weird thing, because there's not really much of a, like, you know, os like it's not a continuous vibration. It's more of like a sudden sort of sound that it's hard to you know, distinguish it between am I just feeling a big gust of wind on the side of my head or am I hearing it? But in reality, it's kind of both. There is also certainly a distance element to it. You know, when my hands are like out here doing it, I'm not hearing it. It's not until I move much closer. Like there is a very steep drop off based on the distance. But yeah, it seems very possible that you can hear a half clap, even if it does depend on your technique. 
And if you've been able to stick around for this long, might as well give that subscribe button a click. But more importantly, if you've put up with me for this long, a clap and a half to you. And of course, a clap and a half to Mr. Matthew Patrick as he comes to the end of his time on GT Live. The thing responsible for teaching us what a clap and a half is, and also the thing at least partially responsible for messing up my sleeping patterns. Now, I'm not going to go on a giant map pack tangent. I already did an entire video of that. But hey, that's not just a theory. I did an actual practical test to back it up. I'll see you when you're older.